everybody starts the season even, ready to go to begin the fourth iteration of the highest echelon of marble racing, Marbula One. The world converges on the Razway to watch 20 competitors attempt to stake their claim for Marbula One championships, both individual and the team. And Team Momo has their captain on pole position at this racetrack, the first time we've been back here since the inaugural season of Marbula One. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. You see the choices that the teams make to kick off this year. Could that be a crucial one? Of course, the team members have to compete in equal numbers of Grand Prix. And we see Team Momo with their captain up front in front of Speedy, Orangen, Cloudy, Stinger, and Pinky Panther. The likes of former champions like the Crazy Cat's Eyes with Blue Eye all the way toward the back. That is a change. Even Mallard back there mid-pack is a bit different for the Green Ducks. But hope springs eternal as we get ready to dive into the first turn of the Razway. And we're rolling to start the season. Team Momo gets around first. Orangen holding second place. There's Speedy and Stinger trying to go around the outside of Orangen to take that spot. But a nice counter move. Orangen comes back into the second place, makes the move for the lead in that chicane. Momo drafts by on the straightaway, heading into the far hairpin. Speedy is looking economous as they come around. Oh, they're going to be side by side coming up this conveyor belt. Speedy as it is. What will Speedy the Marble do coming off of it? Second place. Nice burst of speed from Stinger, who notches in the third spot. That jolt leaves Orangen momentarily stationary. That lets Cloudy close right up. Momo, as we saw it during the qualifying race in Q2, is trying to stretch off into the distance. These top three switching back and forth all the time. Momo notches fastest lap, 23.45. Off they come the belt. This is a close battle there between Orangen and Speedy. The two of them trading by the corner, it seems like. Stinger is also in the mix. Here comes Cloudy with a nice launch off of that ramp. Setting yourself up for the next two sectors of this course if you nail that drop perfectly. Well, we'll into the hairpin, ready to complete this lap. Then it's Speedy, Orangen, Mallard, who has had a wonderful recovery up to fourth spot. Pinky Panther, Cloudy has fallen back. Firo, Stinger, Starry, Hart, Shimmer, Fenrir, Arup, Cerulean, Thunder, Mocha, Razzie gets by Iceberg, then it's Blue Eye and Clutter all the way to the back. Speedy has gotten by Momo while I was reading that off, but now Momo says not so fast. Following lockstep in the hairpin, those two are very close. Speedy by four tenths of a second. This lead will continue to change, I imagine. There's a nice battle that we just saw off-screen. Orangen and Mallard as they dive down through the first sector. Orangen is holding that third spot for now, but wants a piece of P2. Oh, missed move there. Almost opens the door for Mallard. There goes Orangen. Momo falls back to third. Cloudy has lost touch with these just a bit. But stringing together in maybe two, three good sectors has gotten that marble right back in it. Off they come. This is Speedy's lead right now, nearing the midway point of this first round of Marbula One. We're only two and a half minutes in. This race is going quickly. Oh, there was some collisions back there right before the ramp, and the benefactor was Cloudy. Third place for that marble for the Hazers. Momo falling all the way back to fifth spot right now. Speedy. Six tenths of a second is that lead. There we see it coming up the belt, but that mid-pack battle is very close. That hasn't always been the case in opening Grand Prix in Marbula One. Sometimes this field really gets strung out, but everybody has done their preparation. Oh, and look at Orangen making a mistake there, going right down that attenuator, but doesn't pay the price for it. Momo, looking for an opportunity, almost gets by and makes up three spots but now gets jostled back. But look at how close that up. Five marbles on three steps of the conveyor belt. Cloudy gets the inside line there, and Orangen cannot fight back. Momo tries to get by, but there's a collision. And Piggy Panther also got set backward for a moment, as does Mallard. Mallard got a hard whack there. We're seeing several points of this racetrack developing where if you make one wrong step or there is a collision 
at the inopportune moment, you will pay for it. The lead is down under three tenths of a second. Speedy leading Cloudy. And it's a little gap back to Momo, who still holds fast his lap. Nobody has been able to get their speed going to match that pace. But ultimately, you're fighting for a win up front, not necessarily fast as lap. Well, looking back there, there's a lot of speed from Mocha. Pressuring Stinger, who was up there in the top three, but has fallen all the way back behind Arup. Stinger in 12th spot. The lead has continued to come down. No, Cloudy has the lead over Speedy by 10th of a second. Off of the belt they come and down through the drop. Wonderful exit by Cloudy. Orangen, she's Momo giving a little bit of pressure, but Orangen got by within the last lap. The brief peak farther back in the field. Clutter still dead last. Blue Eyes only made up one spot. Fenrir has dropped all the way back to 19. Thunder has been back there most of the time. Mocha is going backwards. Cerulean recovering slightly. Mallard falling back down there into sixth. Still better than the 12th where Mallard started. Cloudy, who began this race in fourth, still holds the lead with just a couple to go. You can watch those wandering their way through these turns. Several different lines that these marbles have taken, but it isn't always paying off either. There's a look farther back with Blue Eye fighting with Finn Rear as we take a look at the front of the field. Going up that conveyor belt, those marbles positioning themselves on opposite sides. Interesting to see which exit works best. It seemed fairly even that time between Cloudy and Speedy. He is slow through that turn right before the drop, however. He does get some speed up here. Oh, a mistake off the attenuator for Cloudy. And Speedy has the lead, but the draft goes right back. And a clout by Speedy on the curb seals that first place as we head into the final lap. Two big rivals in season one are now facing each other once again. Savage Speeders and the Hazers. Speedy, Cloudy, two lengths apart. Heading into this near hairpin. In front of the grandstands, Cloudy goes around the outside and an impact there does the same thing to Speedy, which sends that marble going backward. Perfectly timed, Cloudy will win the opening Grand Prix and their first ever Marbula One race. Speedy gets second place, Momo holds third, and Clutter suddenly remembers to finish this race. There we go, oh my, not sure what happened there. Well anyway, Orangen does get fourth in front of Mallard. The Hazers are thrilled. Speedy, a net gain of zero over the course of that race, but that doesn't tell the whole story. 13 overtakes for Cloudy, seven for Speedy, finishing over half a second behind. And that was a great closing duel that we saw. I'm not sure if we're gonna get all of the replays on it, but here was one of them. Look at how close they were. There's the outside move by Cloudy, and that impact right there stopped Speedy just enough. There's Coach Smokey up there as well, celebrating on the top step of the podium. And that's a nice points haul for the Hazers. There's Pink Panther getting stuck and passed by Mallard, but does manage to get back. That opening sector is deceptive. Slow in parts, but very technical. I dare say that Cloudy mastered that first sector, but really made it count coming down that back stretch. One Grand Prix of Marbula One down, many more to go, and we hope that you'll be with us for the entire way. See you next time. Every season in Marbula One has featured this racetrack here in Orlando, the home of the O-Rangers, as the series returns once again to the O-Raceway. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. The home track has not been kind to the O-Rangers. They are yet to score a point here, even though Clementon did get one in qualifying yesterday. How will things shake up for this race? Well, all of the teams are using their other marble than what we saw in the first race. So it's wide open. Yes, some of the same teams are up there, but how will their teammates from race one compete today? We will have to see as Billy sits on pole, a familiar position for that marble. The winner of the very first visit to the O Raceway back in season one also got fastest lap that year. 
Team Momo is fast here. The Chocolatiers have also won. That was last season. And the Chocolatiers are up there again. It's Billy and Swifty on the front row. And we're rolling. Billy with the better start and covers off Swifty. Clementon falls back two, three, four positions and is dropping greatly. Ecto comes up in the third. Royal in fourth after a bump from Club. Clementon back there in sixth as they head under the sand for the first time. There's Royal. Shoots by. Billy can do nothing to stop the Cobalts. They go up into first. Swifty also gets by. Here's Ecto now trying to pressure Billy. He looks at the inside on Swifty but can't get it done. Three hundredths of a second separating second and third. Royal first off the belt. It's nearly a three wide launch coming off there as we get a great look through sector number one and the entrance to that sand portion. Royal Pinky Winky now into second place. What's Swifty going to do? Goes right down the middle and is trying to shoulder them aside. Can't get it done. Royal holds the lead. There was contact between them, however. Pinky Winky gets by in that slow corner as they head on to that short shoot. Royal fends off Swifty this time, but does get fast as lap Swifty does at 28-1-3. Remember, that is worth championship points in Modular 1. The top two beginning to separate themselves. Pinky Winky was holding back Billy. Ecto is up there. Glimmer, Frost, Clementon, Red Eye, who started dead last and is now into the top 10. Misty and Club back in 11th now. Nice move there from uh, what's that? Raspberry Racers, I believe. Rizzy made up a couple of spots on the sand. There's Billy trying to get in the draft of Pinky Winky just off camera there. Six hundredths of a second. Royal and Swifty up front. We get a new fastest lap from Tumult. All the way back in 19, whose teammate finished some 20 seconds behind the entire field in the first Grand Prix. A bit more speed, it looked like Swifty to the first sector. How do they handle the sand? Swifty is staying off of the walls, but so is Pinky Winky, who is one length back. Red Eye continues to climb and is now up into fifth after starting in 20th. Bumble falling all the way back to last. Sirius is just in front. And now three tenths, Royal with a bit of breathing room, but only two steps between them coming off of the belt. And it might be a fairly even launch, but trouble on the attenuator for Swifty, and that loses a few lengths. Pinky Winky still doing a great job, a valiant effort to hold on to third spot, but for how much longer? And I can no sooner get it out than Ecto goes by into third. There you see Red Eye in the distance. Coming through here, Bolt gets by Rizzy on the sand. Rizzy has kind of struggled off and on on that sand portion. The Rangers have struggled overall. They are not making up positions, holding in 10th right now. Royal Swifty, Ecto, Red Eye gains another one in fourth. Pinky Winky, Glimmer, Billy, Misty, Frost, who just gets by Misty, Clementon rounds out the top 10 as Club gets by. Oh, great move there. Swifty to get second place, coming onto the sand. Here's Ecto. And has it back by the time they exit. That completes sector number two, that white line that you see just after that right-hander coming off of the sand. We are nearly halfway done with this second Grand Prix. The field still relatively bunched close with a little bit of separation here and there. Up front, Royal holds the lead. Ecto, Red Eye has gotten by Swifty. This is the Red Eye that we are used to seeing, not the dead last in qualifying Red Eye, who was the individual champion in Modular 1 one season ago. This is a nice charge. And first is Ecto's. As always here at the O-Raceway, managing the sand is key to a great lap time and perhaps a victory. Still many laps to go, though. Ecto, over Royal, Red Eye, Glimmer, Swifty has fallen back to fifth, Pinky Winky sixth, Frost, Misty, Rizzy, and Philly in tenth. The Rangers' home hopes have fallen all the way down to 17th now. Going backwards is Clementon. Tumult still holds fastest lap down there in 15th. Red Eye in third, going right down the center there. And banking in between those walls is not what you want to do as you come down the sand, and that's precisely what Clementon was doing. Now down in second to last. Ecto, half a second clear on Royal. Red Eye, another second and a half back. Swifty and Glimmer, how's the launch coming here through sector number one? Nearly all of the marbles in the top five or six opting for that inside line coming into that right hairpin in sector number one. A couple are choosing to go over that attenuator. Look at the speed they're carrying here as they descend onto the sand. Is anybody going to make some big moves here? Well, we had a couple of launches almost 
for the Chocolatiers farther back, but they couldn't complete that one as they sit in dead last. Chocolatiers, of course, winners at this race last year. Bon Bon was the victor in that one. Ecto, Royal, Swifty has recovered and gotten back by Red Eye for third spot. Trying to hold on to that last step of the podium. Glimmer, Pinky Winky, Billy, slowly recovering. Was first, comes down here to seventh. We've got a battle for the lead, side by side, and Royal gets by, exiting the sand. Royal, perhaps, taking a few laps to regather to figure out what challenge is needed for the final few laps of this Grand Prix. A tenth and a half between them. Royal and Ecto, Cobalt versus Team Plasma. They are five lengths apart. Swinging around through this first sector. They go to the inside. Royal covering off that move, but there. Oh, on the exit, briefly. Ecto got by. Will it stick? No. Royal fights back. Trading positions. And Royal handling the sand much better. Able to get a gap. Coming down here onto the front stretch. In front of the podium. Who will be standing on it? At the moment, it's our top two, and now Red Eye has gotten back up there. Swifty has fallen back. Glimmer is going to try to charge on Red Eye. Tumult up to 12, still holds fastest lap. The Rangers, 19. Let's not talk about that. Royal, a couple of laps to go now with a nice gap over Ecto, but Red Eye closing in on second place, trying to make amends for what was a disappointing start to the season. Doing much better here, this field of staying pretty close, even though the Bumblebees are not going to be happy with their finishing positions. That serious, weaving in between, challenging there, almost gaining three spots in two corners. Final lap, as they come down through the sand for the final time. Royal has to keep it clean. Try to get up there and finish P1. Ecto is also trying to hold on to second place. How close is Red Eye? Very close. One length between them. On the charge down through the final turn, Royal will win. Ecto holds off last year's champion for second place. And the crazy cat's eyes are back on the podium. Clementon dead last. After a decent starting position, 17 spots lost for the O'Rangers, who, boy, they personify the host curse when they come to this Grand Prix. On the flip side to that 17 loss is the crazy cat's eyes red eye up 17. Nine positions gained for Royal to come up to the front. That is impressive for the Cobalts. Royal in Marbula 1 has now won three times. And that is an early challenge from Billy. And that contact let Swifty get by, and that really changed the complexion of the race for the Green Ducks. Congratulations to our podium finishers, even Team Plasma, getting up there. Winners of the Marble League Showdown in 2022 try to carry that success over into Marbula 1. Well, there we see the combined standings now that each marble on each team has raced once. Cloudy and Royal, the two winners of the races. Then Speedy and Momo are up there. Nice for Ecto over Red Eye, who has the vast majority of Crazy Cat's Eyes points from just this one Grand Prix. Savage Speeders hold the lead, 33 points to the Cobalt's 32, but they jump up seven positions. Oof, O'Rangers down six after the second round. Thunderbolts down there in dead last, one of just two teams yet to score a point. Will some of them finally break through? Will excellence continue? Lots of storylines abound, and we hope you will keep with us for Marbula One. The home of the Pinkies, bathed in pink light, surrounded by blooming cherry blossoms, plays host to the intensity that is Marbula One, as the series comes to a new circuit, Sakura Garden in the third round of what has already been quite a season of Marbula One. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. The Pinkies, ever gracious hosts, not too far from the Ampink Theater, where they celebrated some good results in the Marble League in the past, a great community gathering space. But Sakura Garden, or Sakura Garden, is a place that has shown itself to be a versatile racetrack. Already in qualifying, 
in the individual runs and then in the pole shootout in Q2 just yesterday. A fast, undulating first sector gives way to a super speedy second that crashes into that hairpin, drops down immediately into the banking, and then it's another hairpin right after to start the third sector, which is a straight blast down to a small chicane. That sweep will take the marbles across the line and up the conveyor belt. The Pinkies packing a whole grandstand that they set aside for themselves. They are passionate fans, and their marble, Pinky Panther, is starting on the front row next to pole sitter Speedy. Will that marble be able to deliver the team's first Marbula One win? We're about to find out. And we're rolling! Pinky Panther gets the better start. Oh, but then gets caught up on the curves and goes from first to fifth in a series of two corners. It's Royal all the way from eighth to first place and a nice gap as they shoot through the banking for the very first time. Royal leads Mimo. Speedy is weaving back and forth, trying to keep them behind. Misty and Pinky Panther get in a fight. And it looks like, yes, Pinky Panther has gotten ahead back into second place. Nice speed coming from Speedy. Going around the S's at the top of that first sector. Locked step with Pinky Panther as they head into that far hairpin drop around the banking. You can see Speedy taking a tighter line. How will that work as they head into the hairpin? Mimo is fighting to keep them behind. Royal leads to the tune of 0.6 seconds. Speedy notches fastest lap, 21.62. And look at this, around the outside, takes second and has a go at the lead. Very close, Speedy. Perhaps gonna use that interesting line through the banking to take first place. They're staying where they are for right now. The field's spreading out a little bit. You can see Clutter back behind where We've seen that marble before, unfortunately. Just not here at Sakura Garden. Royal. Then it is Pinky Panther. Speedy. Very close. Misty. Mimo. Firo gets by Mimo, as I say that. Iceberg. Arup. Shimmer. And Quasar. Running down to the bottom of the order. You've got Razzie down there in 15th. Thunder. Mocha. Clementon. Blue Eye. And Clutter. Speedy and Pinky Panther continue to fight up front. You see the gaps widening a bit. Now one second for Royal from Speedy. This is a marble that won in the second round just one week ago. Trending nicely. Just one of four or five teams that decided to run the same marble from last week as this week. Meaning their teammates, of course, are going to have to do double duty at some point later this season. Oh, nearly going two and three wide heading into that hairpin. That is a prime passing opportunity and Royal resets fastest lap 21-4-7 and continues to stretch that lead. Heading into Q2 yesterday, we saw what was an ideal lap time based on the purple sectors from each of the individual marbles in sectors one, two, and three, and it was in that 21 second range. So the performance that Royal is putting on is remarkable. What's the gap now? It is only getting bigger. Three and a half seconds. Royal is dominating right now, but Still, a lot of laps to go. We are barely at the halfway point. Speedy having some trouble on the curbs in the first sector, but recovers and once again is right up on Pinky Panther. Misty was right there. Seemingly, the door was open for a moment. This is a great view coming out of the banking, by the way. Love that shot of all the marbles taking the different lines. Oh, that was a nice over-under, perhaps, that was setting up Mocha and Clementon, but I don't think that move worked. Ah, oh, maybe it did. Mocha is by Clementon. And up front, Speedy going around the outside. They take a different line, but get stopped by Misty. Nice opportunity there as they come through. The banking weaving back and forth. Speedy taking a different line. Oh, but contact just at the point when that marble was about to make the move into the hairpin. Couldn't get it done. They're going to be one step apart on the podium, but Royal has lost two seconds in the lead up front. Is that mistakes on the curbs, different lines, or is that just better racing from the marbles that are behind? Royal leads Speedy, Misty, Firo is up to fourth. Iceberg, Era, Pinky Panther has fallen all the way back to seventh. Fenrir, Mimo, and Quasar rounding out the top 10. Firo started all the way back in ninth. He's now up to fourth, as I say that, drops to fifth. This is very close between all of these. Oh, we got a new fastest lap. Razzie resets it to 21.40. That's a nice low number 
that might continue to come down. Of course, all these teams visiting this track for the very first time, getting a handle on its lines and its idiosyncrasies. As they learn that they've only had one qualifying session here and these laps in the race are gonna get faster. Two seconds is the gap from Royal to Speedy. Two successful marbles. Speedy, of course, the individual champion in the very first season of Marbula One. Thunder takes it down another six hundredths of a second. Way back in 16th, however. Here's Speedy and Royal. This is as close as they've been. Speedy immediately looked to the outside and the door was shut by Royal. Perhaps some complacency up front and all of a sudden, looking over that shoulder and seeing Speedy half a second back, Misty is also very close. How do they shake out through the first sector? This has been a tough sector for the leader. Speedy, this time a lot more patient. As they come down through the banking once again, Speedy looks to the outside, goes to the inside, and has the move done, but at the hairpin, Royal takes it back. They are drafting each other one length apart, and through the chicane, Speedy takes the lead by two tenths. We've not seen a ton of moves among the leaders at that final corner, but it can be done. This time, a defensive line through the S's. Speedy watching Royals every move while also trying to keep that momentum up front. Just a couple of laps to go. Here comes Royal to the inside, but Speedy has it covered. Going down the straightaway, weaving to break the draft. Speedy comes through one-tenth of a second now. It's gone from two-tenths to one. Misty also within half a second, trouble off the belt, and Royal takes it back goes for the racing line instead of a defensive one because I think Royal realized Speedy on the back foot but has recovered immediately. Right before the drop, Speedy takes P1. They're four lengths apart. Closer as they come across the belt. Two tenths and this is the final lap. Speedy versus Royal. Will Misty have anything to say about it? They're opting for different lines and now they go defensive through the S's. Speedy over Royal. Very slow and deliberate here. Both of these marbles know that there are passing opportunities coming up. Royal to the outside, back to the inside. Has the lead through the hairpin and may have timed it perfectly. Royal is gonna make it two straight in Marbula One. Speedy comes second, Misty third, Firo in fourth, and a roar for Pinky Panther who notches that team's best Marbula One finish, one better than the previous, in fifth. This was a fast race, an evolving track that saw marbles learning it as they went. The Cobalts thrilled with the performance they have seen from Royal. Royal goes from eighth to first. Vero also up five spots. Look at the seven from Arup and Fenrir on the flip side to that. Quasar and Mimo dropped quite a bit, not what they wanted. As the teams make their way to the podium, underneath the beautiful flowering trees here at Sakura Garden. This has been a nice welcome. Gotta say. Royal, that is the third win for the Regal Marine. Now goes above 100 points for their career. Up at the top of the standings, Five clear of Speedy, but of course this is an odd-numbered race, which means that not all of the marbles have run the same number at this point. So we'll have to see as it continues to march through the season where things shake out. Will we see some of the traditional marbles, the traditional front runners, make their way? How about the teams? Well, the Savage Speeders are up there. The Cobalts are getting used to being up there now. Two wins in three races is one heck of a start to the season. The Hazers up there as we've seen in the past, Team Plasma. The Pinkies move up to fifth, jump three spots at their home Grand Prix. And the fans, yes, it may not have been a win, it may not have been able to hold second place, but they are thrilled with what their marble did, and rightfully so. Let's get that host curse broken next time. <laughs> we hope you'll join us. Stay tuned, everybody. One of the most historic tracks on the Marbula One circuit is also one of its most difficult, as the teams have weathered through qualifying and will now attempt to conquer Greenstone. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods up by the start-finish line, a track that has very different halves to it, or I should say thirds. The first two sectors 
weave like a babbling brook, appropriate for the Green Ducks moniker before the teams are allowed to open up the throttle. They come through an accelerator through a very swift third sector that can be deceptive too. You'll see time lost in many locations around this track, most notably at the end of sector two, right before the accelerator, hitting the walls back and forth there or catching the walls at any point. They are an unspoken difficulty of this track. So many marbles get caught on them, even with just a glancing blow, especially coming off the accelerator though, that can really slow you down. Well, unfortunately, the Green Ducks know something about slow after qualifying Billy in dead last. We'll have to climb up the order and paddle quickly to make it up to the front where Swifty sits on pole in front of Tumult, Rima, and Club on the first two rows. And that's a great view of the layout. More corners here than on any track on the Marbula One season. And we're rolling. Swifty takes that outside line into the first turn and loses out, but gets it back as they begin the descent through the weaving first and second sectors. You will see some passes through here, but it's when the marbles choose to attack that could make all the difference. Swifty, Tumult, Rima, Starry, Club, also up there. Here comes Cloudy trying to look by Club, who goes backwards through the accelerator. Oh, Ducks, it appears, have left the pond out there. Don't see them watching. I was going to make a comment about how they are enthralled with this race, but nope, they're gone. <laughs> All right. Billy has made up a spot, by the way. Here we take a look at the start-finish line. Swifty comes through. Momentary challenge from Starry, but then it goes back the other direction. Cloudy has made it up to third spot. Tumult fallen back to fourth. There you can see Orangen, who won this race back in season one, mired in the middle of the pack. That marble knows how to conquer these 23 turns, so a lot of eyes seeing what can be done there. As Red Eye now fighting with Billy back there for 17th spot. Up at the front, a challenge along the outside. Starry takes the lead, and they're gonna be one, no, two steps apart as they come up the belt. Starry got fastest lap with nearly a 32 flat. We know that in an ideal lap time, a 30 seconds is perhaps possible, but on a track this long, it takes a while to rubber in. You can see that gap from second to third, the top two beginning to stretch away, but one misstep can close that right back up. Cloudy holding back Rima, Tumult, Ecto, Club, Bumble, Sirius, and Glimmer rounding out the top 10. Orangen comes up to 11th. Red Eye falling backward now, second to last. Billy up to 15th. The gap up front is 1.3 seconds for Starry. Chalk now takes fastest lap, 31.87. We are seeing improvement. Look at some of the lines these marbles are taking into that first turn. Some choosing to launch high up on the curbs, others staying more composed. Now for a track with this many turns, this much physicality, how much is Swifty just sitting back and watching? Oh, maybe had a chance to make the move there. Through the accelerator, Swifty gets by in much the same way that that marble captured pole position on the final lap of Q2 yesterday. Is Starry content to let Swifty lead some laps and perhaps get tired and then make the move? No, it happens that quickly. Some contact off the wall gets Swifty off the racing line and Starry gets by. Rima also wants a piece. These are our three podium finishers as they run right now. Question is, what order will they be in at the end or will other marbles have something to say about it? Really slow off that corner. Swifty does it again. A master of the third sector, Swifty is putting together a great performance. When it counts, it's just a matter of holding that lead through the rest of the lap. Oh, a three-way battle there for second place, and here we go once again. This time it's Rima going up to the top spot. Could it be that Swifty is letting these other marbles do the pacing through these most difficult turns? Let them tire themselves out. Let them make the choices for where they want to run. Swifty knows that you can stay within striking distance. And actually, right before the accelerator, you just saw it on the edge of your screen there, Swifty took back P1. Also making moves is right there, Orangen, who takes fastest lap in the process. 31.27. The track is speeding up. So is Orangen, climbing all the way up to 7. Billy only made it up one more spot, down to 14th. The lead for Swifty has grown, 
wandering through the second sector over Rima, Starry, Cloudy, and Ecto. Sirius is also right there and has been making up some ground. Club and Bumble behind Orangen and Tumult rounding out the top 10 who has fallen backwards from what looked to be a prime starting spot. Nice third sector here for Rima, who is ever so closer to Swifty. Take a look farther back in the field. Red Eye now runs dead last. I'm glad the camera lingered there just a moment because wow, 10 seconds off of the lead is Red Eye. Swifty managing the pace. Rima, second place, maybe four lengths back. These turns right through here is all oh, where it's made or broken. And right there, Rima capitalizes and takes top spot. Can Swifty carry that speed around? Yes, indeed. Swifty is just goading them into taking the lead, heading into the third sector before saying, I'll take that back if you please. Here comes Swifty down through sector number one. Orangen still holding in seventh spot. Still plenty of time for that marble to try to make it two in a row here at Greenstone, at least. As now Rizzi takes that infamous 20th position. Little bumps on the inside of that turn there. Nearly every marble doing it. Oh, Bumble did not, however, and makes up two spots as a result. Final couple of laps. Just under one and a half seconds is the lead by Swifty, who has managed this race as calmly as can be. The fans willing Billy to keep climbing up the order, has gotten up to 13th. They'd love a top 10 here after a disaster of a qualifying, but will it happen? Also, what about the Cobalt? Cerulean back there in just 18th. We're taking a look at this great battle. Back and forth they go, Frost gets by. Cerulean trying to capitalize on momentum from teammate Royal, who won two straight and is getting a well-deserved rest this weekend as we head into the final lap. This battle mid-pack is heating up. What about up front? Is that going to stay measured? Swifty over Rima. Big gap back to Cloudy. Starry, Ecto. Oh, Ecto gets by for fourth spot. Then it's Bumble, Origin, Sirius, Momo, and Club. Heading into the third sector. Can Swifty hold it? Around the final couple of turns, the Savage Speeders have converted pole position to a win. Swifty with a dominant performance. Rizzi, the final finisher there. Nearly 15 seconds back, Billy had a terrible closing stretch to that race, losing all of the spots that that marble gained and falling back to 19th. Ouch. Shout out to Isaiah Francis, by the way. He's been a Yellow's Marble Runs fan for the last five years. Thank you for your support, Isaiah. Well, Swifty needed a great result here. This is the second race that Swifty has run in this season. This is also that Marble's first ever win in Marbula One. The Savage Speeders, they are accustomed to success in this discipline. And now we get to compare two Grand Prix for everybody. Royal is the leader of the individual championship over Speedy, Cloudy very close behind, Swifty, Ecto, and Momo. Look at those jumps, 10 spots, 10 spots, 16 spots, 10 for Shimmer, 16 for Frost. And the overall championship for the teams, it is a runaway right now for the Savage Speeders. They jump up one. The Hazers in second place, 18 points back. Team Plasma and the Cobalts fell three. Two 25s and then a zero. Not what they want to continue momentum throughout the season. We hope that you will join us for the fifth Grand Prix here in Marbula One. We'll see you then. For the third year in a row, the Marbula One universe gets familiar with some entropy as we return to the land of the Balls of Chaos here at Tumult Turnpike. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. This is a track that is often a fan favorite in the land of the Balls of Chaos. Three-time 
Marble League gold medalists. They also played host to Marble Maniacs, but they'll have to fight back from 18th today as Clutter well down in the order. On the other side of the grid, Orangen, a familiar marble up there. Pole position last year, race winner last year here at Tumult Turnpike across 17 laps. Had to fight through the order to get there, however. Did not start first in Q2 in that three-lap race for pole position. That shootout went Misty's way through Q1, purple in every sector, but a disastrous start veering to the left allowed a lot of marbles to get by, and Orangen made the critical move coming out of the chicane after the banking. That, plus the accelerator, could prove pivotal in the race today. Watch that chicane and the exits from it. Watch the entry into that banking as the marbles thunder around it. It is a sight to behold. Everybody up in the gates. It is Orangen and Momo sharing the front row. Arab, Swifty, Misty, Starry, Mallard, Blue Eye, Shimmer, and Royal rounding out the top ten. The lights are on. And we're rolling. A move to the left. Orangen manages to cover the field as they all come crashing into that right-hander. Through the banking for the first time. It's Orangen coming into that chicane. Oh, but a great exit by Momo. Around the outside, Momo takes P1. That was phenomenal grip coming out of that chicane. And it will be Momo that leads the way. One step separating Orangen and Era. Then Royal, a nice jump up to fourth in front of Iceberg, Misty, and Mallard. Orangen, oh, had to fend off Era, looking to the inside as they come through the banking here for the second time. Many different lines. It's a wonderful view that you can see from up there. Looking to the inside also, and seeming very racy is Mallard. Chasing Era tries to look to the outside. Maybe that was selling a bit of a dummy, but Mallard has the fastest lap. 21-3-0. Off the belt they come. It is Momo up front. Mallard got by for second place. Orangen back to the inside just as they hit the accelerator. And Orangen has second place for now. Mallard lost two, three positions back there. And suddenly Orangen is going the other direction up toward the leader. One, two lengths separating Momo and Orangen as they come across the line. Appropriately, Orangen, fastest lap, 21 flat. That is an all-time track record in the race trim, at least. And we'll have to see if it works out to a win. Now going different lines, outside versus inside. Oh, Arup, shoulders. Orangen aside, and Misty is now looking for an opportunity as well. They make contact in that far hairpin out of the backstretch. Half a second is the lead for Momo in front of Era. Orangen, Misty, Pinky Panther, Mallard, Royal, who'd been up to fourth, now back to seventh. Swifty, Iceberg, and Bolt. These marbles are absolutely fearless. Oh, hang on. Oh, we get a brief yellow flag. I'm hearing from timing and scoring that something with Bolt the bolt is rolling again. Now, we did see Shimmer have some trouble coming onto the conveyor belt during the qualifying sessions in Q2. But that was a different point of the track where Bolt apparently got stuck or had some issue. Oh, Swifty was right on the back of Royal as they came through that accelerator. It looks like has stayed there. Royal fended him off. They are oh so close. Momo, Arup, and Orangen. Up front, a couple of links back then to Royal, who has regrouped and has third place as they come across the line. Orangen falling back to fourth. Momo and Arif are the two, trying to run away from the field here. Very similar lines between them. Different into the chicane, however. Different through that split, and Arif draws ever closer. Royal, Misty, and Orangen. Orangen continues to drop, nearing the halfway point of this race. Three tenths of a second is the lead for Team Momo. Orangen looking for something to happen there. Swifty and Iceberg coming very close together as they exited the belt. Looking a little farther back in the order, Mallard has fallen all the way down to 11th. Oh look, eight hundredths of a second up front between Momo and Era. We get a new fastest lap and it's Clutter, 20.91. The crowd is happy about that and they should be. 18th up to 5th right now. Clutter is trying to knock on the door of the top five and maybe a podium, but Clutter drops back two, three positions, four positions now. Well, when chaos is in your name, I suppose the unexpected can happen at any moment.
immediately falls all the way back to ninth. Side by side is Orangen and Swifty as they come off of the belt. Orangen, the better of the two. Through the accelerator, and they will stay that way. Mallard continues to fall and gets Meyer back and forth with Clutter. Meanwhile, up front there, Momo and Arup. Royal is also trying to get in the mix, but is well back of Misty. Uh, Misty, that gap rather, between second and third. Nearly one second lead for Momo. Trying to keep it clean. All the way back at the back of the pack, Shimmer. Behind Ecto, behind Chalk, behind Fenrir. And Bumble. Nice little drift move there, Misty and Royal. Seesawing back and forth, forcing each other to opt for different sides of that split. Royal is the better for it. The subtle banks off that Chevron, and these final curves, by the way, through that, that last turn have proved definitive. Several of the one-lap runners found it to be much quicker if you did not Ride the curbs. Oh, this is a great battle back and forth that just developed out of nowhere. Momo and Arup, you can see it begin to set up, but wow, that move by Arup to get right beside and briefly take the lead from Momo. We're getting down to these final few laps. Clutter resets fastest lap back in ninth place. Still looking for a nice points haul. And who knows, maybe there is time to get up there and challenge for the top five. We'll have to see. Swifty. Gets by Blue Eye, who has also been climbing up the order ever so slightly. Blue Eye up in eighth. No, now goes down to ninth. Momo's lead is 1.75 seconds. It is growing after what was maybe a scare, a wake-up call, with Arup challenging for the lead. Very easy to lose your focus, especially if your gap is wide out there. Oh, and look at this. Royal, ever the opportunist, gets by Arup, who perhaps has been too focused on chasing Momo. Now regrouping, will we see a counterattack from Arup in these final couple of laps? Momo already descending through the first sector. Razzie resets fast lap at a 20.52, but Razzie all the way down there in 13th. Royal finally with a bit of clear space, trying to mount a challenge for Momo, but Look at that gap, that is a wonderful view of just how far ahead Momo is. Heading into the final lap, it's three and a half seconds. Unreal. That was a very close, I think there was one hundredth between Arup and Royal. Yes indeed, Arup has gotten by for second place. On the final lap. Weaving through the final sector. There will not be a challenge to the leader, but who will come second? Arup holding the line, comes across in second place in front of Royal. Momo wins at Tumult Turnpike. Pinky Panther gets fastest lap on the final lap to finish in seventh place. Blue Eye goes all the way up to fourth, and our pole sitter Orangen falls back to fifth. With such a short lap here, there's always so much that goes on. Oh, look at that, how close it was with Blue Eye. What was the official there? Two hundredths of a second. Royal almost lost that final podium position. Wow. Dangerously close. But for Momo, the winner had set the track record back in season three. That marble notches their first win in Marbula One. Looking at the individual championship, Royal up on top, 68 points. Momo does jump four spots up to second. Swifty now in third. Arup jumping eight spots, and Blue Eye catapults up 20. That is amazing. Crazy Cat's Eyes have been needing points as the team standing still going the way of the Savage Speeders. Hazer still holds second place, but Cobalts are up one, Momo is up two, Plasma dropping down by three, same thing with the Green Ducks. Crazy Cat Size, they benefit, they're up four positions. Well, now halfway through the Marbula One season, we've got some very interesting storylines developing. The question is, how will they end? Welcome to the land of ice and snow. Who will win the Grand Prix? Well, nobody knows. But what we do know is that Marbula One makes its return 
to Slate Street with slight modifications from one year ago. Billy sits on pole position and the host gliding glaciers are hoping for a bit better result than last year. Of course, last year featured that notorious ice sheet, the wallless stretch, the catwalk, where so many dared to get near the edge in risk of falling off. Back then, the gliding glaciers did not have a strong result. They started 13th and finished 14th. On the flip side, Billy started 14th and finished 13th and is in considerably greater form today. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. This deceptively simple track layout from top down may not look like much, but the competitors and the coaches will tell you this is anything but straightforward. So many twists and turns, both literally and metaphorically, that they did not see coming in preparation for this race. That's why some marbles were completely out of position after qualifying yesterday. Smoggy, our winner one year ago in front of Red Eye, Wispy, and Clementon, but the order has shaken up a bit. Billy sits on the front row with Cerulean, Mimo, and Rizzy close behind the hopes of the gliding glaciers back in 15th with Frost, not what they had hoped for, but the crowd is still jubilant and still ever hopeful at the prospects today. Two right-handers, 180 degrees between them. Get us started. Lights are on. And we're rolling. Billy a bit slow out of the gate, but does manage to get to that turn first and is already challenged by Cloudy, who streaks by and goes into the lead. Cloudy from fifth position has a great start. Ah, but here comes Thunder right behind. Many marbles opting for different lines coming through that drop. Cloudy going up on the curves, but holding P1 for now. Thunder half a second back. Billy has fallen to third. Red Eye has come all the way up from ninth to fourth place. Our second place runner from last season through the banking. That gap looks pretty sizable for Cloudy, but it shrinks as they slalom back and forth. Red Eye is stalking there in third place, looking for second, trying to catch that draft and gets right up on Thunder and cannot get by. We do get a new fastest lap from the leader Cloudy at a 20.18. Lap three of 16. But that's Cerulean careening back and forth from wall to wall, coming off of the belt, but doesn't seem to pay a large price for it. Great view coming off of the banking. You can see the different lines as they snake their way through the trees. Those evergreens delightfully covered in snow. Cloudy's lead is over a second now. Red Eye just four tenths behind Thunder. Then Cerulean, Billy, our pole sitter, Pinky Winky, Rima, Clementon. Frost gets by into eighth as Clementon drops a couple of spots to tenth, and then Mocha in between them. Red Eye shoulders by into second place and is immediately up against Cloudy. They both go for the outside line. Red Eye has been strong in the third sector from the laps that we've seen, and they're going to be maybe a step apart. Red Eye puts in fastest lap, 20.17. Very close between them here. One length, they're side by side into the banking. Red Eye looks to the inside and does it, heading into the slalom. The breaking move gets Red Eye back into P1. Cloudy trying to figure out what the heck happened there and needs to regroup quickly. This is a marble leading right now that led quite a few laps at this race one season ago, even if it did not translate into a win. Field. Still pretty close together. Tumult in last. Oh, they're speedy, I believe, making some good moves. Weaving through and trying to make up some positions, but starting so far back. And hey, Cloudy resets fastest lap. It's, it's coming down by hundredths of a second each time, and that's more than hundredths of a second. Cloudy is back by into the lead. A much better launch coming off of the conveyor belt. And now Red Eye mounting that challenge once again. Contact between them. And that opens up some breathing room. Nearing the halfway point. We are not there yet. The gap, six tenths between them. Rima now resets fastest lap at a 20.09. The track is rubbering in a bit. It's getting faster. Perhaps that's because the track temperature started so cold. Once you get some action out there, it's bound to heat up a bit. Our pole sitter Billy just disappearing off the bottom of the screen there in fifth place behind Rima. The lead up front has shrunk once more. Just 
Just under two tenths of a second. The rest of the field so far down through 12. Under seven seconds between them. Even Tumult is just 10 seconds back. A bit of a skip there for Cloudy. Does that slow the speed and let Red Eye make a move for the lead here? We can see some marbles back there coming off of the banking, struggling to get their speed down, bounding off of the curbs. The lead almost doubled that time. Now it's three tenths of a second for Cloudy. Down that back stretch and into the banking. These two marbles are setting themselves apart right now. Thunder, who has third spot, is almost nowhere to be seen. There you go. Quite a few lengths behind. Look at the speed that Cloudy is able to carry down that straightaway. Oh, very close between these marbles back here. As Speedy makes one spot, perhaps two, and tries to make another one before the belt. But is still back there in 16th place, mired in the pack. Lead here for Cloudy and Red Eye. Over Thunder is growing. There are some good battles farther back in the pack, however, while the leaders are holding station. How much are they saving for the end of this race? There's some inventive lines there coming <laughs> off of that drop, and I think Mocha is losing out because of it. Back to the left right there, Speedy making another position coming off of the belt, and another one down that back stretch. Into the banking, Speedy also gets by Mocha, but cannot hold it. The lead staying about the same up front, down to these final few laps. And Thunder, three seconds behind the leader. Speedy is putting on a show back there. I know the section for the Savage Speeders fans is going crazy every time that marble goes by. Red Eye may have been a touch quicker through the entry into the slaloms. We see Nemo back in 15th place. That is very surprising for a marble that started in third. Completely going backwards. Here's Speedy once again, almost gets two more spots on that straightaway as we've seen done before. Speedy holding in 12th spot, slowly climbing the order. One, two marbles at a time, sometimes falling back one spot and then going up again. You see the entirety of the field back to Tumult. For the Balls of Chaos, they are not enjoying this season one bit. I think they're more looking forward to the hot chocolate in the locker rooms after this. The lead has expanded over a second and a quarter between Cloudy and Red Eye up front. That's why we haven't seen too much of it, but Cloudy is completely in a class of their own right now. But here comes Red Eye. It was very difficult to use those phrases here in Marbula 1. Oh, this is going to be very close. It's changing quickly. Oh, it's very close between them, heading into the final lap. Two hundredths of a second. I, I knew as soon as we went to that finish line cam, this was shaping up to be close. One more lap, Cloudy and Red Eye. A little bit farther back there, Speedy getting past and falling backwards to 13th place. In the meantime, Cloudy comes across and holds it from Red Eye. Thunder comes back four and a half seconds behind them. Rima, who will get credit for fastest lap unless anybody else pips it right at the end here, just misses the podium but does get fastest lap. Billy, our pole sitter, can only manage fifth. For the Hazers, it's two years in a row, standing atop the frigid podium at Sleet Street. Smoggy did it last season. After starting from 11th, Cloudy comes up four spots to take it for the Hazers in this season of Marbula One. Red Eye comes in second place for the second year in a row. Thunder from the Thunderbolts comes in third after a seventh place one season ago. Well, this was a track that had action going all over the place, maybe not always at the front, but they tried to save the best for last between them. A challenge for the lead, and then Cloudy was able to manage it coolly as expected in sub-zero temperatures. And they get to celebrate up on the podium to the Hazers and the Crazy Cat's Eyes and the Thunderbolts. Royal and Cloudy tie for first place in the individual championship. Wow! Momo drops back one, Rima's up five, Red Eye comes up seven, Billy, even with that disappointing performance, comes up 12. And how about Thunder? 
Our podium finisher there up 22 spots. Through round six, it is the Hazers that jump into the top spot in front of the Savage Speeders. In the overall for the teams, Cobalts and Team Primary come next, Momo and Plasma. Crazy Cat's Eyes, though, lurking up two spots, now into seven. An exciting race to cap off Yella's birthday weekend. Happy birthday, Yella. And we hope you enjoyed it as well. We will see you next time for Marbula One. Despite making its third visit to Misty Mountain, the mystery of this location only seems to deepen as the Hazers play host once again to Marbula One. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. We know this track is somewhere. I don't know, we all made it here. I'm surprised that all of the camera crew and everybody else did too, and there's fans in the stands. But uh, where exactly are we? I couldn't tell you. The monks that led us here didn't tell us either, but hey, they brought snacks this time when they led us up the mountain, so that's a plus. Either way, the Hazers host this round from a position of strength. Cloudy leads the championship in the individual standings. Misty is back in 12th. The Hazers overall have a lead in the team championship over the Savage Speeders and the Cobalts, who will weave their way through the mist and come out triumphant at this iteration of Misty Mountain, but we will have to see. In the past, when we have come here, Clutter seems to do pretty well. Pole position two years in a row, one back in season three. Hazy did break the host curse back in season two and one here at the time for the Hazers. Fastest laps have gone to Cerulean from the Cobalts and Swax of the Bumblebees. But different team lineups, different conditions. The Haze a bit thicker this time around for this Grand Prix. And the Hazers fans are thriving. They say bring it on, make it mistier, in fact. Well, <laughs> if that is a benefit to their racer, I'm sure they're going to be cheering for plenty. All right. In the blocks, ready to go. The Arrangers sit on pole position next to the Savage Speeders. Where have we heard that before? And we're rolling. Clem into the first right-hander. Speedy manages to hold off the rest of the field. Cloudy is up there in third, but is doing a monumental job of trying to keep everybody behind. Clementon, in the meantime, has disappeared into the distance. Ah, here we go. Cloudy into second place, but loses it around the final turn. Red Eye comes up into second place. Off the belt for the first time. Who handles it best? Oh, look at that gaggle of marbles all together into that far hairpin as they drop through and end the first sector down the straightaway. Tumult is making up some ground and comes up into fifth spot there, but nobody challenging Clementon at the front. We do have a new fastest lap, and you will see it's a very short one, 17.01. This is a course that comes at you very quickly. Remo was challenging Red Eye off of the conveyor belt, but couldn't get it done, and in fact lost a position to Speedy in the process. As they drop through here, sometimes going two and three wide, you have to make up your decision which side of that split you want to go to. Clementon leads by over half a second, Red Eye in second, then Speedy, Rima, Ecto, Momo, Stinger, Quasar, Hart, and Cloudy has plummeted down the order back to 10th and now gains two positions as I say that. Wonderful drop, Speedy clears Clementon who falls all the way back to fourth. Wow, something terrible happened on that drop and Clementon lost the lead and it wasn't even close. Speedy takes the top spot, Rima goes up into second place, Ecto is there, Clementon, Red Eye also in the fight. Oh, look at that battle up front, Speedy and Rima winding back and forth. And I think Rima's gotten it done. Yes, they're gonna be side by side coming up the conveyor belt. Seven hundredths of a second between them, Rima takes P1. Ecto wants a piece of Speedy. Clementon has recovered now up to fourth. Cloudy has recovered up to seventh. Well, Clementon has been in fourth, I should say, and is right in between several marbles. Oh, very close. There's going to be three on one step of the conveyor belt. Off they come, now chasing Rima, and Clementon goes back to second place. That was a masterful move coming off of the conveyor belt. You saw Rima dip to that defensive line knowing that the marbles behind are on a charge, especially Clementon, who still holds fastest lap. Oh, as I say that, Hart has stolen it away and Clementon steals P1. Clementon takes the lead of this race with contact to Rima, 
leaving that marble out to dry for Red Eye, but Red Eye cannot pass yet. Rima has fallen back to fifth. Red Eye now into second place. And what's the gap here? Oh, several marbles very close together. Momo and Speedy just a tenth or a hundredth of a second apart. Cloudy tips heart and goes up into eighth. Ecto falling down to sixth. Meanwhile, at the back of the field, Pinky Winky is all the way last. Behind Billy, behind Mocha, behind Sirius, and behind Shimmer. Clementon, a second and a half ahead of Red Eye. Speedy in third. Momo, Ecto, Rima, Cerulean, Cloudy, Heart, and Thunder. Quasar just off of the top ten. The speed differences for some marbles coming off of that drop have been tremendous. Others seem to be getting into a groove with it now. Red Eye has just taken half a second off of Clementon's lead. Through the first sector, each of those top four or five marbles having some space between them, and that lets them focus on their line. The laps are quickly running out. We saw the three lap pole shootout in Q2, done in under a minute. That gap continues to come down. Red Eye has carved another three tenths off. Oh, look at how close they are, just a few lengths as they come through that far hairpin. Now two, three lengths between them. Off of the drop, Red Eye in the draft. They both move to the inside. Red Eye shoulders aside. And did the move get completed? No, not this time, but another few tenths have come off of that lead. Clementon versus Red Eye up front. There's the view as they take turn one. Big gap back there, wow. The field really spreading out in places. We're still waiting for Pinky Winky. There we go. Wow, that's everybody. <laughs> Could we see a marble get lapped here? Clementon responded very strongly. A 1.8 second lead, a second and a half gained over Red Eye on that lap. But is that a matter of Clementon really pushing? Or is Red Eye saving some in the tank for a final challenge in the few laps remaining? Here it comes back. Now half a second between them. Speedy goes fastest lap, takes two hundredths off our previous best time. Sitting in third spot, here comes Red Eye once again. I think that was just a cool down lap, ready to mount that next challenge. Here comes Red Eye over the curbs, keeping it under control, loses momentum in that penultimate turn. And the gap goes back up, now to point seven. Getting into the final few. Misty Mountain. We've seen several marbles working their way up the order. And we take a peek at the leader. Red Eye with more speed down that backstretch closes up. Down two lengths behind. They come across the line. They're going to be one step and four hundredths of a second apart. Who gets the better jump off the conveyor belt? And so far it's Clementon. Contact between them into turn one. One lap to go after this one. Oh, their red eyes move around the outside, but the door is slammed shut by Clementon. Momo has gotten by, Speedy, as does Cloudy, back up into fourth place. Could a podium be in the cards for the Hazers? New fastest lap goes to Quasar in 10th, and we have begun the final lap. Clementon, down the straightaway. Red Eye, two turns left to make the move. The gap is shrinking, but it will not be enough. Defended perfectly, Clementon gets the first Grand Prix win of that marble's career in Marbula One. Wow, Pinky Winky, 18 and a half seconds back, but all eyes on Clementon, a marble that was 36th in the standings. Scored one point in round two, none in round three, five points in round six, and suddenly gets a win a week later in what was a back and forth duel with Red Eye. Oh, there was the move. I think Rima got caught up in the lane for the safety marble. Some reason off the belt feared to the right and was not able to get momentum back for the rest of the first sector. And how about Momo, by the way? They have reason to be thrilled. Nine spots up from 12th to third. After Swifty at Greenstone, another pole to win this season. 
Clementon of the O-Rangers holding off Red Eye. Momo tired after coming up nine spots. What a run. We have seen Misty Mountain be wide open to the field. Any marble can win here from any position. As we take a look at the standings now, Cloudy, 84 points. The leader now of the individual standings has broken what was a tie up front, Cloudy versus Royal. Of course, one Grand Prix between them as well. We'll have to see how that shakes out. We'll get a good look at that next round. Hazers continue to build their lead. 117 to 108, nine points ahead of the Savage Speeders. And you can see we still have a couple of teams back there that uh, have a lot of points to try to make up, but are still within the hunt statistically for a team championship this season. Will anybody be able to knock off the Hazers? Well, we'll have to tune in to find out. Right now, it's looking pretty good for them, but anything is possible in Marbula 1. Behold, the eerie glow of one of nature's fundamental particles in racetrack form. This is the Electron Expressway in Zero, the home of the Cobalts. Well, speaking of electrons, a shocking Q2 yesterday in qualifying that saw one of the best overtakes of the entire season by Mallard, a marble that is 24th in the standings, has scored just 16 points all year, and goes up into pole. We also see Swifty and Misty up there with Mimo, Arup, Starry, and number seven is where a lot of fans here will keep their gaze affixed. That's Royal, a marble that leads or could lead, perhaps, the championship, at least after all of the marbles are on equal footing. Royal is third technically in the standings, but has raced one fewer than the two marbles ahead of it, Cloudy and Momo. Royal, the winner of two straight back in rounds two and three, followed that up with another podium back in round five, but has had two weeks off and will have to overcome a less than ideal starting position. For Mallard, on the other hand, hoping to turn this into what could be a first win. I know a lot of coaches have been wondering this late in the season if their choices of racer will pay off. For the Green Ducks, we're about to find out. And we're rolling. Mallard leads the field away, but very close behind. That's Mimo in second place. And it looks like Arup has come up to third. Here comes Mimo, contact among the top three. They're all together with Starry trying to catch up to them. And look at that inside move, Arup through the split and into the accelerator, shoots off through the banking, and our first time through the electron shells, we've got marbles leaping over several of them all at once. Arup holds over a half a second lead from Mimo. Off the belt they come, and look at the positions changing all the time. Oh man, that's Blue Eye back there, nearly in dead last, although Pinky Panther is well off the back of the field. I mentioned those coaches' decisions could be coach of the crazy cat's eyes. Be having that conversation. All right, Mallard in second place, coming through the accelerator, chasing Arup. Royal comes up into third, through the banking, and well handled through those electron shells. Mallard has fallen back to fourth, and Royal is on the podium spot for now. Mallard gets back by into third spot as they come around the shallow right-hander into this hairpin in this stadium section. The top four separated by a few lengths and contact between Mallard and Royal sends them to the outside lane and they lose positions. That is the chicane where Mallard made the move that was definitive in Q2 to get pole position. Orange and Notch's fastest lap here, 25-6-6. Oh, trouble! Trouble in sector number one as Arup gets caught up on the wall and Starry takes over and Arup continues to plummet. Who is the benefactor but Royal? We talked about championship winning moments. These kind of races will make or break a championship if you are in the hunt. Not a great starting position, could have been worse of course, but Royal gets fastest lap and is in second place. Now falls back to third as they meander their way through this first sector. There was a nice battle there with Swifty, Rizzi, and Fenrir. Fenrir comes up into ninth place. That's a team that, woof, not good in positioning. Both team members have eight points, and that is pretty low on the standings. Mimo working alongside there, going the inside line. 
Looking back at the chicane. Three wide down that straightaway. Orangen battling with Club and Fenrir. Firo also in the mix. As up front, look at this. Royal in second place with one length or two between them. Looks to the inside, but can't get the move done there. Caught on the wall briefly. Falls back to third place. Mallard tries to take advantage. Taking lane number two there for Starry through the Electron shells. There is Mallard. Oh man, Mallard is doing well to get back up into second place and is recovering and tries a different line coming off of the conveyor belt to get by Royal. Contact between them in sector number one. Now they have a touch of separation. These two are going to continue battling. I feel for the whole race, there was a mistake. Royal, perhaps looking over the shoulder and went directly over the split. That lets Mallard get by into second place, but still has one full second to make up to track down Starry. Looking farther back now, behind those top three, it's Arup, Clutter, Club, Nemo, Orangen, Fenrir, Swifty, Firo, Rizzy, Misty, Chalk, Glimmer, Bolt, Frost, Bumble, Blue Eye, and Pinky Panther. There's Rizzy going around the outside, and now sets up for Firo. Oh, the gap has come down up front. Look at the scoring pile on there, under three tenths of a second between Starry and Mallard. Nobody has been able to reset fastest lap for a while, but here comes Mallard, right up to the leader. Weaving back and forth, and speed goes to Mallard, who takes the lead inside defensive line, but that's actually the quicker line through that hairpin, it appears. Shooting through the banking into the electron shells, taking that far outside line, that actually worked pretty well for Mallard, and it gives that marble fastest lap. 24.85 is the new mark to beat. And we've got several marbles that are gonna be side by side as they come up the belt. Look at Orangen climbing up through the order, now into fourth place. Rizzi locked in another battle there with Firo coming oh so close. There's Fenrir and Misty, the latter of whom is in 13th in the standings. He's had a couple weekends off though. The lead is just under four tenths of a second for Mallard over Starry. Orangen up into third place after starting in 14th. Everybody else started up there decently far. Starry in sixth. Mallard, of course, was our pole sitter. And here they come together again. Starry and Mallard. And these walls are rough. A lot of electrons like to stay in their lane, but uh, these marbles do not always. And if they try to go outside of the bounds of where they are bound, the walls push back. I'm sure there's some quantum explanation for that. It's Starry and Mallard once again. Mallard to the inside in sector number one and will have the lead as they come down this straightaway. Into the stadium section, Mallard holds the lead with two laps to go. Both go to the outside, then it's a gap back to Orangen. Very close that they will come through the accelerator. Different lines. But, oh, Mallard just always seems to nail the third sector but can't get the entry onto the belt. Starry is going to be right next to him. Oh, and Mallard fends him off heading into the final lap. This is always a fun racetrack, even though we've only been here twice. This is some great racing. Oh, they both make the same mistake and end up on the same edge of the wall. Otherwise, Starry, oh, does capitalize on a mistake. Starry, as Mallard goes over the barrier once again. Will the third sector be kind to Mallard? No, Starry steals it away and wins at Electron Expressway. Big gap back here to the final couple of marbles. Wow, 18 seconds adrift is Pinky Panther. Teammate up in 30th, Pinky Panther is actually a little ways ahead on that in 12th in the order, but that was not a good one. But what was good is coming from 6th to 1st for Starry. Team Galactic will stand on the top step of the podium. Mallard's first win will have to wait until another race. Orangen up 11 spots, Clutter up five, and look at Club up six.
that is impressive as well. Misty, though, fell down seven spots. Royal could not be up there on the podium, much to the dismay of the home team. They were hoping for some theatrics. And they did not get it from their marble, at least, but wow, we had some great battles up front. Excellent mid-pack fights as well. There was so much going on, though. And that is a jubilant podium, at least for two of those teams of marbles. Green Ducks, they're happy to be up there. They're happy to get the points. Oh, but they wanted that to turn into a win so badly. Congratulations, though, to Starry. As we take a look at the championship standings, everybody on even footing, and Royal goes up into second place, just seven points behind Cloudy. In front of Momo, then Speedy, Orangin is up four, Starry and Mallard both jumped up 12, and Clutter up 13. In the team standings, no change among the top three. The gap does narrow a bit among several of those teams. We do have some making moves in the mid-pack, others at the back. They will not be able to win this season of Marbula One. So much to play for, though, as we enter the final two rounds, your last gasp effort to chase a championship, to find glory. And we hope that you will subscribe and stay tuned to see us next time. Out of the infinity of the cosmos, the world, no, the universe, turns its eyes to round nine of Marbula One. Round nine of 10, that is as the Stardust Accelerator welcomes the top echelon of marble racing for what could be a crucial round with time running out. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. After a dynamic qualifying, I think everybody was still transfixed on this track. In fact, I carved a replica out of mashed potatoes just last night and I still don't know why. Well, what we do know, here in the Galactic National Space Center, this track a little over 16 meters in length has gone through its third iteration in three appearances, two of those in Marbula One. This place is also packed with Team Galactic fans, and they are hoping that their marble Quasar is going to be able to gain a few spots and claim P1. Of course, with the number of rounds running out, 25 points on order for today, plus one for fastest lap. Three were on order for pole position yesterday. That went to Blue Eye. Yes, Blue Eye of the Crazy Cat Size is up on pole position next to Momo as they're in the blocks. Oh, that's a weird sound. Race start aborted. Taking a look at race. Oh, somebody's on the track right now. Oh my gosh, we've made it the whole season without this happening. What, do we consider this a space invader? All the security marbles chasing after it. Ah, and they've made the catch. Down there at the bottom of the track, end of the conveyor belt, ouch. That is being piled on right there, disappearing into a black hole. All right, race control chatting amongst themselves. A bit concerned, I said this place was bonkers. All right, I think we are ready to go. Yes, lights are on, blue eye on pole, Momo right beside. And we're rolling! Billy actually went backwards at the start, but Blue Eye holds P1 as they come through sector number one. All well, the field getting caught up behind Arup, and that gives Blue Eye a bit of space through the accelerator. Orangin looking to the inside there, nearly goes three wide through that quick chicane on the backstretch. This is a very technical sector here, and Blue Eye has had trouble. Fallen back to fourth spot, and it's Arup up in P1. Momo in second place. That marble had briefly flirted with the lead coming through Q2 in the shootout for pole. Coming off the belt, Blue Eye has lost another position. Quasar, the fan favorite here, is fallen uh, no spots at all. Actually has gained one, as I say that, in fifth place. Momo and Arup swing around. Our new leader comes through that chicane, bangs against the wall, but not too hard. Also up there is Mocha. Quasar has gained another one up into fourth spot looking to continue to break that host curse. We've seen it a few times from several marbles. And listen to the cheer. Quasar takes fastest lap, 26.31. Blue Eye hanging in fifth in a nice battle with Orangin right there. Iceberg right behind them. Then it's Tumult, Swifty, Ecto, Cloudy, Club, Rizzy, Cerulean, Shimmer, Bolt, Billy, Pinky Panther, Sirius, and Stinger. Of course, Cloudy in the hunt for the championship. Oh, look at this battle going on right now right in between them. Perfect timing right there. 
And meanwhile up front, Momo holds the lead. Padi does take fastest lap, 26.01 now. Mocha up front in it's kind of a rare position for that marble and for the Chocolatiers. That's awesome to see. Trying to draft each other, weaving back and forth down that straightaway is Mocha to try to break the draft with Momo, and that does not work. Although now Momo is having to defend against Arup, who does get by in that double right-hander to end the lap. That is a prime passing opportunity, as we saw in qualifying. Top two off the belt take different lines. Mocha has Arup covered. Not anymore, though. Arup does get by P1. And then Mocha, Orange, and Tumult, Quasar in fifth spot, still holding into that top five. But look at the battle between those two silver marbles in front of Momo. Who was that that shot by? That was Swifty. Great move coming off of the accelerator, but Swifty cannot continue it and will lose a position before the belt and might have gotten one back there at the same time. Quasar up into fourth. This place is raucous hoping that Quasar, who stumbles coming off of the conveyor belt, can hold this position, having to defend mightily, and it will not work to Swifty. Oh, but look at Quasar fighting right back. Blue Eye has fallen to seventh spot right now after the hopes of the crazy cat's eyes were peaking, hoping that maybe they were finally back on form. Cloudy still holds fastest lap, but has fallen down to 10th spot. That is a marble that is leading the individual championship right now. Royal is second. Royal not in this race. It's Cerulean that has fastest lap. Then Momo in third. And that marble was running in second. But look at the drop all the way back to 12th. This is always a complicated track. This middle sector right through here has been reprofiled. No beam splitter from last year. And Momo recovers up to ninth as we're taking a look at this three-way battle right now between Quasar, Mocha, and Swifty. Here comes Quasar passed into second place. Up the belt they come. Who will drop off cleanly between those two? They seem pretty even. Quasar and Orangin. Quasar does have plenty of time to track down Arup and give these home fans perhaps a win. Either way, a podium would be massive. Get back to that thought, by the way. Next up in the lineup for individual championship is Speedy, not in this race. That's Swifty for the Savage Feeders. Then Orangin is in fifth, so a second place in this race would actually work decently well, but that's a lot of points still to claw back. Weaving through sector number one. This track in its third iteration the first year had all kinds of tricks to it. Second year did have that beam split. It was reprofiled slightly. It's gotten shorter. Now Pinky Panther there in last place as we take a look at the entire field streaming down off of the conveyor belt. Arup is the leader to the tune of eight tenths of a second. Then it got back to Quasar and Mocha, Swifty, Blue Eye has recovered up to sixth. Club, Tumult, Momo, Cerulean, who still holds fastest lap. Bolt, Shimmer, Ecto, Rizzi, Cloudy down in 15th now. Billy in 16th as Ice gets by, Iceberg gets by. Stinger, Sirius, and Pinky Panther. Getting into the final few laps now. Cerulean and Bolt, we're watching in the middle of our picture, getting very close, coming off of the accelerator. And hey, we have a new fastest lap, and it is the leader, taking a big chunk off of that fastest lap time. In fact, 25.22. Arup is trying to gap Orangen. Quasar is in a bit of space, but is starting to pick up the draft of Orangen, coming through sector number one. That is advantageous to Quasar and Team Galactic if there's a gap back to Swifty, because one, Quasar doesn't have to worry about Swifty, and two, Mocha might get a run on Swifty as well, so the attention will have to go backwards. Yes, and there they came together, in fact, Swifty and Mocha. There's Blue Eye weaving in between and almost gets them both. Club shoots the gap and goes up to fourth spot. What an opportunistic move in the final few corners of the lap. What's the lead up top now? Arup, Quasar in second place over Orangen. Club, Blue Eye, Mocha, Swifty, and Tumult. Momo and Shimmer rounding up the top 10. Shooting now through the accelerator, most marbles opting to ride the curbs at the far hairpin there. Arup's lead, a second and a half, heading into the final lap. This is a marble that is ninth in the standings. This is the second race in a row that Arup has run and does not appear to be all that distressed because of it. Through the accelerator, half a lap to go. Quasar in second place, trying to close in that gap. 
Arup through the final few turns. Quasar is getting closer. But Arup will come across the line and win at Stardust Accelerator. And the fans here are rewarded with a second place from Quasar. Orangen gets third and rounds out the podium. Arup's first win in Marbula One. That is also Team Primary's first win in Marbula One. Wow, what a feeling standing atop the podium. So much to look at when we are here at Stardust Accelerator. Much of it seems otherworldly. With the action on track, it was also hard to believe but up two spots and fastest lap for Arup, 27 points. Quasar nets 20 by coming up four. And look at Club there, up eight. Team Galactic jubilant in second place as hosts for Marbula One. Orange in there in third spot, netting some nice points in what could be a tight battle with one race to go. That marble is not in it for the individual championship. But you can see the green names there. Just four marbles can still win the championship. And this is remarkable, of course, because marbles can run a maximum of five races. Cloudy and Momo have run their five, and Momo is now ahead. Royal has one race to go. Orange and Arab and Swifty, they are locked in. There you see six teams can still get on the podium and can actually still win the Marble League. Team Momo down there with 104 and with, what, 29 points on offer for the final round. There is so much to play for. To close out the Marbula One season, we hope to see you next time. Subscribe and stay tuned. One race to decide two champions, the individual and the team, here in the fourth season of Marbula One. And for the first time, this sport is welcomed to the jubilant Casino Square, where, I've got to say it, it's a full house. And they are throwing a party. They are really living here. The tables are wide open, and the woodsy is wild. All right, we get ready for what promises to be a very fascinating finale to this season, a track that we've never been to before, that in the limited running in qualifying proved to be a very interesting track to see that has passes just about everywhere. Oh, hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. This is 15 turns for 15 laps. Who will come out on top? Yesterday in qualifying, there were some points on offer and that actually changed the championship permutations. It eliminated a couple of marbles, the likes of Rima who qualified well down the order, Red Eye who was not able to grab those extra bonus points for qualifying. Those two marbles are out. Momo, who is the championship leader, sits on the sidelines watching this one. Oh hey, here we've got the odds. It's only Royal and Speedy in this race, and you see Speedy needs 25 points or more. A win worth 25, fastest lap is worth one as well. The Blackjacks are just happy to have everybody here. And can I say, since this is the final Marble One race of the season, however your marble does, just enjoy this. And we're rolling for the final time in season four. Bumble holds off the entire field. Red Eye comes up into second place. Then it's Mallard and Nemo. Royal hanging back there has some trouble at the hairpin and may have lost a couple of spots. Speedy, who is one of those marbles in the championship hunt, does get by but has to win this race in order for it to count. Nemo drops through, whose teammate Momo is waiting anxiously on the sidelines. These top three marbles separated by one length and Red Eye goes up into P1. That was a heck of a first lap. The defending individual champion, Red Eye, causes a collision there. And we've seen that in a few corners of this track. Marbles can hit either the wall or each other just right, and they stop almost completely. 
down here in the second sector. We saw that happen in qualifying. Oh, somebody's having some trouble back there. Was that Glimmer? Drag race down the straightaway. Speedy gets by into second place and has fastest lap and will be side by side with Red Eye. Speedy with the lead. If this holds, Speedy will be the individual champion. Speedy not taking any defensive lines yet. Focusing ahead as this marble often does. Speedy, Mimo, Mallard, Bumble, Clementon, Red Eye. Oh, back and forth battle there. Royal and Clementon. And Frost also getting in the fight there. Back in seventh place. Hart for the home team is in the top ten. A lot of marbles here cheering that one on. Speedy's lead is not a comfortable one. Heading into sector number two. Now it's ballooned out just a bit as Red Eye and Mallard continue to fight back and forth between them. Red Eye gets by and already has sights set on Speedy. Red Eye around the outside. Red Eye catches the draft, gets fastest lap, and for now has denied Speedy the individual championship. Oh, Speedy getting caught up on the wall there again. Falls back to third spot and is trying desperately to get that speed going once again. Red Eye in front of the grandstand. Here you can see Speedy drafting Mallard. We are on lap five. Oh, almost five marbles there. Coming down the straightaway, Royal falls backward to 12th spot. Even if things don't shake out up front for Speedy, that's not enough for Royal. That would mean that Momo is the champion. Those two marbles have to get things going. Speedy is in second place right now. As through the hairpin, we see several marbles getting right up together with each other. Rima, Hero, Clutter also up there. We see Royal weaving back and forth behind them. Royal has to get a move on here, Red Eye. Nearly two second lead up front. Speedy, perhaps, just doing a couple of cooldown laps, ready to mount a challenge. That is a pretty large gap, though. And if Clementon can get up there and start making things complicated for Speedy, well, Red Eye may actually hold this lead to the end. That would make Momo the individual champion. But look at this. Royal is now up into 10th spot. An interesting look down toward that far, quick chicane. Look at how fast the marble shoots side to side there. The change of direction is just incredible to watch. Royal needing nine points. That means a finish of seventh or higher. Could also get eighth. And with the championship, oh, Speedy coming to a crawl. Clementon and gets by into first. The O-Rangers need 15 points more than the Savage Speeders to win back-to-back -back titles. Remember, Team Primer, the Hazers also in the title fight. They are nowhere to be seen. Rima down there in 10th. Misty outside of the points as well. Lots going on here. Clementon holding the lead. Speedy now back in fourth. And again, needs to win this race to be the champion. Otherwise, it's going to be Momo as it currently runs. Red Eye still holds fastest lap. That is worth one point. As they drop on through, ooh, some trouble there with Nemo. And that lead has come down a bit. There you see it. Two, three lengths. Red Eye to the outside and takes it back. The lead goes to the crazy cat's eyes. Through the hairpins they come. Speedy is now behind Bumble. Catches that draft, but... Has to get by. Laps are running out quickly, both for championship hopes for each of the two active marbles here and for the Marbula One season. It's Red Eye over Clementon, Bumble, Speedy, Mallard, Frost, Firo, Rima, Nemo, who gets by Rima, Hart in 10th for the home team. Chalk, Royal all the way down in 12th. Razzy, Clutter, Pinky Winky, Glimmer, Misty, Bolt, Fenrir, and Starry round out our field.
nearing the six minute mark of this race. Some marble starting to look tired at this new track that I think some of them misjudged. Oh, trouble in sector two. Red Eye, slow down that short shoot and Bumble takes the lead. Clementon in third, Speedy still back in fourth. The lead is half a second for Bumble. Red Eye has looked so good through these opening turns of each lap. And he briefly looks to the inside, decides not to make the move there. Bumble getting caught up on the walls. Once again, the door opens just briefly. But Red Eye cannot step through it, and there was the move, but the over-under goes right back to Bumble, and speed for Red Eye. The Crazy Cat's Eyes have the lead once again. Looking farther back, Royal is in 10th, needs a few spots. Oh, Royal falls back to 11th. Speedy is still fourth. There are just a few laps to go. Three teams coming into this round, tied at the top of the standings. It's Hazers, Team Primary, and Savage Speeders. Then it's the O'Rangers back in fourth. Right now. One point three six seconds is the lead. Red Eye over Bumble, and we are now in the penultimate lap. The gaps quite wide among those top four. Is Speedy about to fold in the hopes for winning a championship? Royal, all the way back in thirteenth, has not been able to get a rhythm going, and for a marble that has looked so good over the course of the season, won two straight. Back in round two and round three, another podium right after that. This would be a disappointing finish to the season. Oh, contact there with Razzie and Club. There's Red Eye at the front of the field. Final lap. Crazy Cat Size may not be in it for a team or an individual championship, but there is still honor to be had. Bumble cruises by in second. There's Clementon and there's Speedy. Mallard back in fifth. One last time through the drop as Speedy gets by into third. Red Eye comes through and wins the race here at Casino Square. Bumble comes through in second. Speedy not good enough in third. And Royal's gonna be all the way back. That means by sitting on the sideline, our individual champion is Momo. And we get one final pass for the 2023 season. Starry puts in some effort there. The crazy cat's eyes are celebrating, although it's a very different kind of celebration than what they had over the last couple of seasons. Nemo down in ninth is also ecstatic, not necessarily for that particular finish, but for what that means in the team game. A teammate is gonna be standing on the top step of the podium for the individual championship. Momo, a marble that won back in round five, got some bonus points as well, was on the podium two other times, will end up being the winner of season four. But importantly also is the team battle. The encounters are at work, which at a casino tends to go fairly quickly. While everybody's catching their breath, while they're getting the trophies out, while they're making their way to the podium, I gotta say thank you so much for this season, for all of the interactions that we've had online and in the stands, walking back and forth around the tracks. This has been tremendous. And what a circuit to end the season on, by the way. The Blackjacks, fantastic hosts, a party atmosphere well-deserving for everyone who has made it through this Marbula One season. Red Eye stands on the top step of the podium, a familiar place for that marble, but a championship will have to wait until at least next year for the crazy cat size. Ah, oh, there we go. Let the party begin. Blowing in the stands, marbles dancing all over the place. Ah, oh, look at this. This is a treat.
Casino Square for the first time welcoming Marbula One. And I imagine this will not be the last time either as we send off Season 4 in style. What will future seasons hold for these marbles and some of these teams? Are they second guessing now? what marbles they chose to put into the lineup this year. Ah, we got a track invasion as well. Welcome everybody out there. Bring them to the front. And let's celebrate on the podium together. The winning dumpling, living up to the name. Our Marbula One champion in 2023 is Momo. Welcome now to the top step of the podium, our team champions. It is the Savage Speeders. They've done it. The Savage Speeders, Pip Team Primary, and the O-Rangers in the final round. Nodded as they came into it. And this is a pretty good season for the Savage Speeders as well. I mean, think about how well the individual standings went for them and the team standings. You've got Cloudy and Red Eye are up there. Speedy is back there in fifth, came oh so close. Royal just off of that podium. 86 points, one point clear of Cloudy, and a further one point clear of Red Eye, who gave it everything but just needed a better qualifying yesterday. Savage Speeders, 143 to 133, 10 clear of the field. Over Team Primary and the Rangers, Hazers and Crazy Cat's Eyes round out the top five. Our hosts, the Blackjacks, down there in 11th. Like I said, they're not too concerned about that. They are thrilled to have the sport, and I am thrilled to have brought it to you as well. Thank you all so much for watching this season. We hope to see you back next time. In the meantime, prepare for the Marble League and who knows what else may be coming. For everybody at Yellow's Marble Runs, I'm Greg Woods. So long, everyone.